Fish? Ow! Oh, look at that. Oh, so I got a little snook on right here. Pull me down in the weeds. We're in like a foot of water. You could probably see here, Joel. Look at this. It's like trying to dig himself down in the weeds. So this is all about finding fish on the flats. Look at these birds up here. So this is key number one. When you see this many birds, we were just calling up to them nice and slow, making some casts, not really expecting much. And old Mr. Snook here came and nailed my little slam shady. Let's see here. Not expecting much. Well, I mean, this we is uh, this expecting is... to catch some big ones up here. When you get on a flat and you see the birds as we have. Shooter, Cute little snook. Nice little fella. All right, buddy. Come when you get on the flat there. and you uh, come out and you see this much bird activity, it's going to be the, the only surprise is if you don't catch something near them. Yeah, there's, I you know, didn't there's a lot mean of food. To say not expecting much. I didn't. God, come on, give me as a we were uh, As we were coming up, approaching, we like the first couple casts we made, we spooked up a, a school of redfish, right? We're in the fall right now. It's time for the redfish to be schooling. So we have a lot of life out here. And so we're basically doing power fishing, like we've seen, like we've done in the past multiple times. Uh, but we're doing it on open flat. We're not doing it up against the mangroves. The water's pretty low right now. So a lot of these fish have pushed off onto the flat and they're really just scattered oh, around. Nice hit there. Some cases they hold in little pockets and it's basically wherever the most food is. And so easy way to see where the food is, is look for the pros. Ooh, there's a nice fish just hit. Yeah. I want to see where the food is, look for the pros. And that are, that is the birds. They're the ones that literally will not live unless they're catching some fish. Ooh, man, that should have been a strike. So I got Slam Shitty 2.0. Luke's got the bomber, Slam yeah. Shitty bomber. And both have proven to, to work pretty well today. Let me get another cast over there by this guy. Yeah, so the bomber has the advantage for casting distance, but the 2.0 has the advantage on matching the size of the bait. It looks like what these birds are feeding on are little small bait fish. You can see they're not even jumping up, like for, get on those birds. And uh, when they're feeding, they're just literally just, di they're just dipping their heads in the water. That is a clear sign that they're, they're feeding on little small, like tiny bait fish, probably little, little fry bait. So the, given how much food is there, the fish are probably keyed in on that little small bait. So the small lure probably has the advantage. Hey, look at all those birds. But this bigger lure has a bigger advantage just covering more water. I want if I'm looking for that redfish school. Yeah, and so we're also, that's where we're keeping our eyes out for. We're not staring at the camera as much. Cause there's gotta be some schools of redfish when you have all that activity around. Dang. They even have, even have the cormorants in there too, munching. A lot of bait over there. So we're gonna slowly make our way over. But that is it, I mean, mullet jumping, birds diving. Look for those two and let them tell you where to go fish. Cause it's intimidating, right? I mean, we've done a lot of these. Ooh, hit there right on the drop. Uh, we've done a lot of these videos talking about the 9010 zone and you get on satellite maps and it, you know, it makes it seem so easy. Oh yeah, you just look at this for spots like this and they'll all be there. And uh, let's be honest, it's tougher once you get out there. It looks different than what it looks like on a map. In this case, it's intimidating. A, in this case, it's a massive grass flat. So we have the grass flat that goes, you know, to the shoreline over here when we're probably we're probably 300 yards off the shoreline and it goes another probably 200 yards further out. And uh, right now though, it seems like these birds have been diving like right on the edge where, it, ooh, there we just spooked something big right there. But those birds have been right on the edge where it goes from about a foot of water down to like a foot and a half. It's like a really small uh, little depth change but that seems where the action is holding. So we're basically just doing a straight line, going right with them, trying to, trying to stay upwind of, uh, of that depth zone, but also not get too shallow where I'm, I'm clipping the grass. So like I basically have the trolling motor as high up as I can go without cavitating. And so tide wise, we're at kind of the dead low? Yeah, yeah, it's basically dead low. This is a weak tide. We're in between the moons and um, the, the tide just basically is probably just bottomed out, but it's not like a low low. It's kind of like a this Gulf Coast has, you know, the abnormal tides. So it's kind of like a low, but it's really at a, like a mid-level. If it was low, low, then everything would probably be like another 100 yards that way. And we still got a little water movement. We got a little wind. 
Yeah, just a little wind going. <laughs> so, so, yeah, now do, that I... Do what you can with what you got. Yeah, so we're just gonna keep traveling down as we get close to those birds, right? That's clearly where the most bait fish are. And I would be very surprised if we don't get some fish right where those birds are. And this is probably one of the most critical things, is the approach, right? Because back in the day, we would see stuff like this and we'd be in such a rush to get over there. You take your big motor and you go all the way up to them and next thing you know, everything's gone. Yeah. Birds, bait, redfish schools. And sometimes, you know, like even back there, you know, catching fish slowly approaching the area. And this is the time to go stealth mode. Yep. It's one of those things that's not really taught. And it's a reason that we, you know, we start all of our insider members, even some full-time guides uh, have gone through that positioning and approach course. Like, man, like this is some of the most valuable stuff you know, because we're always quick to talk about our our lure and our rods and reels and, you know, what boat or kayak you have or even your wading boots. Talk about your Dr. Juice and Procures. <laughs> but all that stuff doesn't really matter so much if, you know, if you're going up and just plowing into a good spot. Yep. It's, uh, it, it's probably one of the number one reasons people, you know, do have bad days and get skunked. This is why, is why we struggled for a very long time. Yeah. And there's nothing worse. I mean, putting in the time to find a good spot, that 90-10 zone, it's not easy to come by. And then it gets completely, oh, I got to hit there, blown up. And you're the one blowing out your spot. Yeah, or even just approaching. So, you know, I saw those birds with the, the idle zone. That guy's not following it. it. drives me crazy. But the idle zone, it goes mm -hmm. way out, like another 500 yards. And so we were all on the outside. And uh, as we were just going along, I was just looking for signs of life, right? So birds, obviously, is the easiest thing to see from a long distance out. And so I saw, saw all these birds working this shoreline. So kept going, purposely got upwind of them. And now we can just slowly approach and just kind of keep an eye on what's going on. Um, trying to see if they're moving much or if they're holding one spot. And it seems like they were moving earlier. Now they're just holding tight. There's got to be some, red, some of the redfish schools. This is like beginning of fall. This is you know, the hunt for reds in October, as they say. Yep. This is a great time to find some of those schools. And you'd be shocked at how shallow they will get. And, and how well they can hide themselves. They're like a school of 100 redfish can yeah. be in a foot and a half of water and, and you they're know. 50 feet away and you have no idea until you spook them. Or so until one hits something up top yeah. with a bait little yeah, that's, dimple uh, up there. That is a good sign. So yeah, I'm seeing that bait fish here now and so I'm just basically going slowly up to it, staying upwind. We want to be able to cast as far as possible without spooking fish. And we should get onto something here soon. Ooh, there's a little something. Tip number two, don't hook a pelican. Or any bird for that matter. Oh, now the birds are making a little All bit right, of All right, so noise. what I'm really looking for now that they're flying over is I want them to fly over a school of redfish and spook them all. So that's what I'm looking for wakes right now. The fact that I'm not, I see some, that might just be bait fish. Yeah. But a lot of times when those birds spook up, that'll kind of startle the redfish schools and you'll see them push up water and that's what you wanna look for. And then they'll settle down, they'll usually start moving slowly again. So the fact that I didn't see any big pushes there is a little bit concerning on the redfish front, but there should at least be some snook and trout around here. Definitely. Or at least some single reds. All right. And this uh, bottom looks great. Is there oh, a little bait down here? Got them. Oh. Get, get right where it's supposed to be. What is it, trout? Uh, I can't tell. Ooh, we just spooked off another. Oh man, yeah, this is a... This is a trout, it's a big one. As soon as we get into the... I think it's a snook. Into that bait area. Yeah, this is, this is basically right where those, right where those birds were, were hunkered down. And what they're doing, now we're watching them, they're basically going right down this line, right down this line, and they're feeding some more. So now we know the line. Now we know the line to fish today. So there's snook there, Lukey? Yeah, another snook. Hey, listen to this. Two snookage. Let's see, where's this guy hooked? Come on there, buddy. 
Just about had, a lip them and the hook was right in the bottom. So we had some trout on today, so now we gotta get a, gotta get some reds. All right, well, nice little snook. Let him go. Yeah. Snook are always so much fun though. The old bomber ready for action. Even those small ones. Oh yeah. Like the largemouth bass of the inshore saltwater world. Ooh, there, there's a... See some commotion? Yeah. I don't think it's a redfish school that we're looking for, but there's definitely... Ooh, oh, yeah. Well, it might be. That's more there. Oh. I just... Uh, or some snook. Did you have a hit? No, I uh, bumped, uh, bumped, it was a mullet. I just felt, felt my lure so that, is, that is a very good sign. Yep. All right, guys, we got lots of little bait. Now we got mullet. It's a pretty good school of mullet. This is all where these birds were hanging out. So now we're in the bird sanctuary. But you can see there's a lot of bait right here. Oh, oh. felt that thump. Huh? Dude. I saw your rod tip bump. That was a solid one there. Yeah, there's so much food right here. Yeah, this this bait is it's all small, but it's thick. I'm betting that was a snug. This is where it's critical to be quiet and it, not necessarily your voice. Ooh. Ooh, something feeding on that. Yeah, you see that little bait fish slinging out of the water? They're totally honed in. This is where you don't want to be banging. You might want to get to the nub lure there, Joe. My uh, my lure is already beat up quite a bit. There, oh. <laughs> You see that? That was a decent sized fish there. Ooh, ooh, eat it, eat it. Oh man, I had something good follow mine too. Let's see if I still got much left. Let me give oh. another shot at it. This thing is beat up. That one was coming up to really hammer it. I was hoping that was a big trout there. Yeah, we've already caught our, we caught a trout earlier. Ooh, right just now. something big right there. We actually need a redfish to complete the slam, so I'm hoping for red. It's looking kind of snooky. It's coming right at us. It could be a... Yeah, another, that's a bigger snook. Yeah. A little bit nicer. Dang, I was hoping for a nice trout. And all this started just from seeing some birds up on the flat, doing a proper position, getting some good lures. Oh, yeah, baby. See if we can get a double, here, bud. Getting some uh, some good lures, buzzing it over the shallows, Ooh. and then waiting for the thumps. All right. So for handling techniques, just don't watch Joe. It's best to just to grab the fish in the water and don't put them on the boat like that. But I get them in and out real quick. <laughs> He's deep down. He was saying, "Thank you, Mr. Simons." Look at that. Been three snook and it finally, oh, even my leader, who it's playing with fire there, but we're live. I'm gonna keep going, Joel. Keep going. My 100 pack of slam shadies. Oh man, I don't know. Hey, Joe, I need you up here. Yeah, so one tip for, for shallow water fishing is always make sure that your troll motor's not, not too far down, we're in shallow water. And for a shallow skiff, you basically have to get the trolling motor just right where you're just barely not cavitating when everybody's in position. And so like right there, Joe was out of position. He still is a little bit. And so I'm cavitating. So right now we're in position and this is the troll motor is just barely not cavitating. Huge, huge thing. A big mistake people do back to the positioning is they're making a lot of noise. And in many cases, it's just even clipping the blades of grass with the troll motor blades those fish are gone, right? They're not, they're not smart, but they're not stupid. For those that don't know what cavitating means, Where does please enlighten us. Yeah, what cavitating means is basically the, when the prop, uh, when the troll motor prop is too high, Jesus. It's, uh, it's basically grabbing air and it's making a lot of noise. So cavitating means making noise from the surface. My microphone. And then too deep, you're hitting the blades of grass. So you need to get there right in the, right in the sweet spot and on bigger boats, it doesn't really matter, right? Because can, people can, weight can shift around, it doesn't do much, but on a little skiff like this, like just, just Joe going from here to like five feet away, totally wrecks the entire, you know, the entire uh, 
balancing. Let's get my little Chick Fil A on the way home. Apparently. So but even, even with Otis, like literally with Otis, like it drives me crazy. He starts moving oh, back and forth. you gotta be kidding me. First cast out. Oh, you did you a favor. That's that's gonna be the ticket there. That's probably gonna be the best maybe bet. It's, maybe it's telling me a sign. I just... Yeah, we we'll call that the nub lure. So Joe's uh, He's gonna fish a little bit slower. Joe's 2.0 paddle tail just got bit in half. So now I gotta do more of the bounce, bounce. Ooh, I just got thumped. No, I just had a little thump too. Oh, I think it's more a little. But now they can't steal your tail. It's already gone. That's true. Yeah, it's more little puffers or pins or something. Let's see if I got less of a nub. No. The old, uh, that's why they call it the 2.0. And you could actually bomb this perhaps even farther than the bomber. Yeah, it skips Ooh, well too. Out. Fishing mangroves, it skips a little bit better. Watch like it's there, it's bro. actually a very good, very good lure. So if you're in an area of puffers or pinners and they're taking off your your tails, your paddle tails, don't throw them away. That's the time yep. to use them, save them for days like this when, uh, when there's a lot of little fry bait around. I'm trying to figure out what where the zone is. There's more pelicans up there. Bird diving over there. I had a really nice thump a second ago, so I think we're still in them. Yeah, so that was nub. pretty interesting. Like literally right where those birds were hunkered down, that's where we had the most activity. Yeah, and so it wasn't monster fish, but for just coming out real quick and getting yourself or your friends on a bite, catching a couple snook in 10, 15 oh, minutes. There we are. Find the birds. Let's see what we It's on again. Another oh, snook. Another snook. You know, and they come up like that. Ooh, he's mad at the world. <laughs> this one's a little bit bigger, but still not a giant. But man, these things sure are fun. Yeah, they are. And they put, especially these young ones, they, they put up a fight. Yep. All right, I'm gonna go back over that same Let's little get area. get this guy up. Trying to find that redfish to complete the slam. This guy crashed the party. Let's see, how's it looking? This is this is the preferred way to handle fish, right? Keep in the water. Oh, quick pick. <laughs> oh, even a nice little he's showboating, a little oh. showboating jump there. Oh, I just got drilled right here next to the boat. Dang. Let me do it again. So what, um, it almost looks like a little slick here. I've had a couple of the bites have been right in here in this. Yeah, I think that's a little, just a little, that, that shallow, that little ridge, or that slight so little dip like right on the edge. If you can see that, Joel, it kind of just follows it up. And a lot of the strikes have been on either side of, oh, oh right there on the edge again. Dang. The heck, that was a small little fish, but. <laughs> Two in a row. You're right on top of the little Tail slick, dude. It was followed. Was right in the slick. Followed you up from the from the edge. Another snook? Yeah, that's what it looked like at least. Yeah, it had to be a snook. It was jumping. All you need some paddle tails. Spray a little Dr. Juice on there. Let's see if I can easy there get one off this thing. That's crazy, they're all just sitting right here. And this is, I mean, this is a type of structure. Yeah, and maximized structure. And for years, I thought that the only way to catch snook was the high tide, you have to fish the mangroves. They will absolutely come out on the flats. Basically, wherever the food is, these are like the ultimate predators. Wherever the food is, and there's at least some sort of structure, in this case, it's seagrass. There we are, got them. Show into the camera, a little bomber hanging out of his mouth. Oh, okay, not a, still not a giant, but man, they sure are fun. This little fellow there. Yeah, if you guys want just a tried and true lure that even the kids can toss a mile, that bomber is awesome for the fall. I would highly recommend you get a pack or five, fishstrong.com. That's all Luke's been, I mean, that's all you've been using for the most part, the last couple of uh, three, yeah. four yeah, weeks. Yeah, last three weeks. It all these been. picture you guys are seeing, people are like, oh, I saw you guys on Fox News, thanks to our boy Captain Dylan Hubbard. 
We got to retie. One of our insider members, you know, Dylan does the fishing report there on, on Fox. And I get people every weekend send me a message. I saw you guys, let me make sure I'm not hooking anybody behind me. I saw you guys on Fox. And so usually every single fishing report on Fox, <clears throat> either Luke or I or both of us are in there because Dylan goes in the community and you know, takes some of the reports from the Tampa Bay, St. Pete area. Yeah, they're pretty much all members. Like all those pictures yeah. are from members, which yeah, is really, really cool. cool. Salt strong everywhere. They're on local Fox, whatever, is it 13 or? Fox 13. Fox 13 here in Tampa Bay. Let's see if I can go three in a row. Good folks there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Get any more strikes there, Joe? No, just a couple there. I could cast this nub over there a mile not. without the paddle tail, but doggone, I like I like the power fishing, to be honest. All right, look at the power fishing. Three for three, let's see. Can he do it? Can he do it? Who's that, C. Richardson out there in that little blue boat? Huh. Does he have a little blue skiff now? I think so. It does have a logo on the side too, doesn't it? Oh, we gotta go up there and bug him. Come but on, Snoke, where are you? Every time we're about to film and Jumping up the area and Captain Mike Anderson comes up, screwing with us. Ah, <laughs> oh, I didn't go three for three. Worth a try. Ooh, I had someone follow it though. Like, Mike, what are you doing? Like, I just thought you guys might need some help. If he gets up on the push pole, that's gonna be CA. Then we'll definitely go bother him. <laughs> we love CA. We love to bother CA. We had many fun trips with uh, with him. I haven't fished with him in a while. He's yeah, always such a blast. Such a nice guy. Yeah. And so good in front of the camera. He's one of those guys. He, I mean, he's just done it so long, even though he does have to take three days to do one one episode. <laughs> like us here live. Got to give him, poke oh, him a little bit. Oh, man. That was but that guy, he is so stinking smooth and just so likable. Every time we see him at ICAST, we have such a good time with him. Might need to get the bomber on there, Joe. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm about to have to get a new one. Mine's... Change up. This one's Ooh, been through a lot of abuse. Camera guy is telling us that we are low. If you wouldn't mind, yeah. if, you wouldn't mind if, you, if you're getting oh. bomber, throw me a throw me an extra one. I'm not going to get bomber. I'm sticking with my 2.0, dude. My confidence bait. Sometimes you just got to go with your confidence. Now, here's what you also a good thing to do is keep, you know, have these little side pockets, put all your extra line and stuff in. There's so many people, even the, you know, even just the small little clippings, they just shoot it right in the water. Nah, it's not really good, you know. It's monos, fluoros, polymers, soft plastics. Leave nothing behind. Throw it away. The best policy. Throw it away. And there's states like, uh, I think Maine, I don't know if it ever, you know, got, got completely enforced. But in there, trying to do away with soft plastics completely. Lures, that is. Oh, there it goes. What happened? My bomber fell off. Are you serious? Been through a lot of abuse. Right when we're talking about not littering. <laughs> we'll, we'll try to find it. Sweet irony. Good, that news. Good. good news about no current flow is that it has nowhere to go. You get the live. Unabridged. See, so yeah, normally I saw that it was it was looking pretty gnarly. I should have just gone ahead and. Well, it's a lesson you get to learn from us here. Uh, yeah. Horrible fish handling skills from Joe and littering from Luke. When in doubt. Luke the litterer. Is that, is that a good one, Joe? Joe's like, oh, this is gonna be classic. When in doubt, change it out. All right. New new motto. Uh, all right. Because of. We'll find it. Oh, there it is, right there. Look, you see it? Uh -huh. Look, you guys see it? Joel, uh, 10 feet over. See it? Your yeah. shot, basically right in your shadow line now. All right, so we'll be able to get that, but this is this is why it is important. Don't leave stuff, and especially like things like the bomber, they will always float. Pick it up. Last thing we want is to be like Maine where they're having a vote to keep fishing lures 
being able to be sold. Isn't that nuts? That is crazy. Be able to shut down an industry, basically. All right. All right. And we've got it back. And those are black market for fishing lures. Oh, in the yeah. Maine. Yeah, this one went through a lot of abuse. Basically, what happened is that front end finally finally lost uh, lost traction. So put it down in the paddle tail graveyard, bottom of the boat, gets cleaned out after every trip. And if you do put them in your pant pockets like me, make sure to take them out before you wash. Especially if you're putting Dr. Juice on there. The Wife, husband, kids, everyone will thank you. Made that mistake once. Oh, it's starting to grow on me, man. Doctor, did you smell? Yeah. Ew. Really? Do you shower at all? Every once in a while. Okay. That makes a little bit more sense there. <laughs> yeah, it's funny we had a, uh, well, we had a superstition is that the, whoever smells the worst, like on a long trip, catches the most fish, so go on these long, week-long trips and everybody be afraid to take a shower. Otherwise, you have the bad luck. One time we went a little too extreme and we didn't bring toothbrushes for the week. <laughs> I said, whoever's just all natural, uh, that was a bad decision. Uh, I don't know. I think that was your department there. I don't remember doing that. Yeah, that was a few of us. <laughs> yeah, we had our own little tribe. <laughs> no one wanted to hang around us. Imagine going a whole week, no shower, no brushing your teeth. Yeah, this is like just, in August too, like the hottest uh, and most just, humid of all months. You stop smelling at that point. Like after a couple of days, it's just one smell. But it's always at the water, so we're getting, we're getting, you know, yeah, you count, jump in the water, count that as a somewhat shower. Salt water, it's basically exfoliating your skin naturally. <laughs> All yeah, good. so what? So right now we're at this little, this little current, this little uh, shadows area, and what's happening is this is a nice little trough. So we have a shallow flat. This is where they should be it's, nailing our lures. Yeah, it's it like hits. a, it's only like a foot mm. difference. That's just enough. Where it's just a tiny little depth change, and that's just enough to, to hold these fish. So we're gonna bump out a little bit now that we see what's going on. Yep. And I think what was happening with snook were just holding right there. It looks like the current's finally just turned. It's starting to come in a little bit. And those fish are right on the deep side, just, something. just waiting on some easy. Can you see this, Joel, at all? This little. Some easy food. Sl very subtle change in the depth. You can see my lure. I mean, it just whoop. So it goes from a foot to 18 inches. Yeah, this is our first time fishing here too. I fish this this general area a lot, but I've never been to this part of the flat. So this is this isn't like we come into a secret spot that that we always know always holds fish. Ooh. This is literally just reading the conditions and then figuring out the figuring out the trend. Yeah. Oh, oh, I just had one. Yeah, I just had a little strike too. I think mine was a trout. Oh, oh, I'm seeing them coming up. Seeing what? Pinfish. Uh, I thought you saw some redfish schools. You can't give me, can't tease me like that. No, but yeah, I know uh, Joel's saying that we're almost out of time. Oh yeah, just gives the nod. So we'll close it up. I yep. uh, just want to do a quick one here, show you what it's like to go out to a new area and hit a flat and just want to catch some fish on lures, what to look for. and. The biggest lesson is, I mean, where did all those fish, for the most part, right back there where the birds were? The birds, the bait, and we saw tons of boils today. And that's kind of the secret recipe. And then structure, which can even sometimes, obviously seagrass, but even just a little subtle six inch in depth change. Mm -hmm. And those fish were sitting there holding right on that little ledge. And that little, it looked like an oil, it looked like a slick, you know, and you'll see slicks like that in Louisiana. That's where the, you know, you know, the menhaden is from the oil, but this was just, it, it's just a depth change. It's like a little bar and they're all hanging on the flat. So hopefully that helps. And if uh, you haven't joined us at the Insider Club and want to see exactly where we fish and all of our fishing coaches every single week, come join us. That's how it all started. It started with people saying, hey, I, I paid just to see how you guys pre-trip plan your trips and where you're fishing and, and why, how you're picking your spots. How do you find that 90-10 zone fast? And now it's turning everything from all kinds of mini courses and classes and live training now. We actually have live coaching every single week. 
with, uh, with real, real pros. And, uh, oh, and now even, you know, tackle where you're getting 20 to even 30% off on uh, all the tackle. And, um, and yeah, obviously the, the community is second, yeah, and the, and the biggest the biggest thing is really about just getting on the trends. That's really what the focus is, is our goals for the members to just have an edge on, on what the feeding trends are. And in this case, we're in a new spot, but we applied the same trends that we've been reporting on in the last couple of weekly game plans. Every Friday, there's a weekly game plan that just highlights and, and just 10 minutes or less. A lot of people are busy and they don't have time to, to look at, we have post, new posts come up every day. Um, and the game plan is just, somebody's busy, you just got 10 minutes, so they're watching and it'll go through the, oh, look at that fish right there. What the heck is that? It'll go through uh, what's happening, right? What do, where, like, what proximity of, uh, you know, being near the Gulf, near the Atlantic or further inshore. Dang, what is that fish? That was a really big fish, it just spooked off. Yeah. Um, and so we just used the same, the same tactics that we've been reporting on and applied it to a new area. And sure enough, we had a great day, All right? This is just, a, we caught a lot of fish before we even started filming. And uh, it was all about just, just applying the trends, just always the trends, the, the type of spot based on conditions is way better than just somebody giving you like a little GPS spot. So always keep that in mind. Yep. And uh, yeah, if you're not a member, just give it a try. I recommend it. You're gonna absolutely be blown away. For you current members, thank you guys so much. Uh, make sure to head to the community. A lot of you have said, hey, I haven't seen this. I haven't seen your smart fishing tides. I haven't seen where all these trends and all these insider reports are getting posted. Well, it's all in the community and there's gonna be a massive facelift coming soon to the community to make it even more easy to use on mobile. You can obviously save it on your phone just like a normal app. It's called a progressive app, and uh, it's just continually gonna get better and better. So definitely head over there at community.saltstrong.com, and if you wanna join us in the almost 26,000 other members now, go to saltstrong.com, and you'll see a place to join us in the Insider Club. Thank you guys so much. We be out. See if we can go uh, find that uh, elusive school of redfish. Yeah. We know they gotta be out here somewhere. Oh, we saw one earlier Ooh, in there. Boy. They're out here somewhere. The Try sun's. To, we'll film that for our insiders if uh, if if we find them here. So. Sun's about to be out, so that'll be advantage to us. Sun's out, guns out. <laughs> See you guys. Peace.